This is the Transcend in Life podcast with your host, J.M. Ryerson, taking you from fear to freedom. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Transcend in Life. We are doing another Tuesday tune-up with the Ryersons. I'm J.M., and I have with me... Lisa Ryerson. So today, this is probably the most irritating subject, but it's also probably one of the more profound lessons that I've learned. And why I say it's irritating is because once your wife or significant other or accountability partner finds out that you believe in what we're going to talk about today, they are (laughs) going to hold you to it. Yes, we are talking about being a victim being versus being responsible. So at least, I mean, before we get into it, because again, we kind of learned this really together and being able to put like a definition behind what it is. Um, I, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this because <laughs> it drives me nuts that we learned it together because you call me on my stuff all the time and vice versa. Yes, for sure. We definitely do call each other out, (laughs) but it's a good thing, right? Keeps us responsible. (laughs) I think so. I mean, so here's the deal. Let's just quickly define what being a victim versus being responsible. I'm going to just ask you, what does that mean to you? Being a victim versus taking responsibility. What does that mean to you? Because I understand, but I want to have a real meaning with the audience so they know what it means too. Yeah. So being a victim is, I always, um, say it's like the poor me, right? Woe is me. Everything, everyone's out to get me. Um, it only happens to me. I'm so sad. Feel sorry for me. That's how I feel. Right. When some, when I hear the word victim being responsible is going, yeah, you know what? Life is going to throw you curveballs, and I'm going to take responsibility for my actions, or even if things were done to me, I'm going to be responsible in that aspect and, you know, move on with it and find a solution instead of sitting here and feeling sorry for yourself. So one of the exercises we do, and it's literally, you can take this out and start doing this is you, you take a piece of paper, put victim on one side, responsible on the other. And when you start to, uh, attribute some of the um, uh, attributes, the the emotions that go with being a victim, it's pretty evident that it's more on the weak or on the not as powerful side and vice versa. When you say responsible, it's really um, swayed heavily to the higher side, to the to the more powerful side. So can you give some examples of when I say victim, what are some of the attributes that you put with being a victim? What is, how do you feel when that happens? Sad, powerless, um, just out of control, right? Not in control. Um, I mean, the list goes on. There's a lot of just negative feelings with okay. it. What about, is there any positive feelings for you when it comes to being a victim? Um, yeah, like people feel bad for you. So then you get attention, maybe. Oh. I would think that would be maybe a, I put in quotations, positive. <laughs> kind of an empathy, if yeah, you will. And, yeah. Okay. Like same thing. Same question on the responsible side. Like, do, can you think off the top of your head, some of the responsible things when you say that, and then we'll give some examples because this idea, I think it really will come to fruition once we kind of define all this. Yeah. So, you know, when you're responsible, you feel like you're in power, you're in control. Um, you know, you just feel solid. You know, I was just, I, that's one word that always sticks with me. Like when you're responsible, you're just solid. Okay. Same mm-hmm. things. Is there any negative emotions tied to being responsible? Not many, but I think one that would come up maybe would be, you know, having that um, stress of being responsible. Overwhelmed. You know? Yeah. Overwhelming sometimes kind of world is on your shoulders type of feeling. All right, so this comes up so frequently in our day-to-day interaction. I mean, literally, it happens hundreds of times a day where you can be a victim or take responsibility. Did you have anything that happened to you today where you chose to be a victim or take responsibility? Really? Yes. (laughs) I was not a victim today, just FYI. About today's story? I'm not no. any story. Any it could happen driving down the freeway. I actually have the best. I This is one of my favorite stories, actually. <laughs> so our youngest, Trey, is a comedian. 
And I remember he was probably four. And this is something that we've been working with him because I think he can easily go into the victim's side, you know, pretty frequently. Um, And I remember he had hurt himself at school. So I pick him up from school and I go, hey, what happened to Di? You know, why are you why are you bleeding from your knees? And and he goes, you know what, mom, I was running and this bush came out of nowhere and tripped me and I fell and that's how, that's why I'm bleeding. And I go, really? Like the bush jumped out and hit you and tripped you. He goes, yeah. And he truly believes that, right? Like it's really funny. And now it's kind of a joke because we had to go down that route. I go, do you really think that bush jumped out of you? Are you being a victim right now? How about let's be responsible. I didn't see that bush and I tripped over it. So therefore this is what happened, right? Well, now it's kind of funny because it just happened yesterday where he um, hit his hip on the side of the counter. And he he jokes about it. He goes, Mom, your island counter just came out and hurt me, just came out and hit me in the side. And so we laugh about it now because he knows it's funny. Yeah, so, I mean, for me, when I'm driving down the freeway, road rage, I tend to run a little hot when I'm driving at times. No, (laughs) you've got it. You've got to be kidding. And so, but when I'm not checking my emotions, when that happens, immediately I'll go to, he cut me off or she cut me off. Therefore, all these things, then I create this story in my head where it's like, just take responsibility. Like, look, did they cut me off? Sure. What does that have to do with how I'm feeling? Take responsibility for your emotions and you tend to again when you and I are maybe disagreeing it comes out where it's like oh are we being a victim right now and that might be the most irritating thing either (laughs) of us here is oh you're gonna be a victim right now when what you really want is yes you need to hear how bad I feel I don't know how frequently this happens (laughs) but it's pretty frequent Yes, especially during COVID, <laughs> right? This year has been tough. But um, actually, I'm going to backtrack real quick on your when road rage, right? That's very common, I think, among a lot of people. It happens to me as well. And something that I've done that has really helped, and I don't remember where I learned this from. I think it was when I had to go take a like a course because I had a speeding ticket or somewhat something happened. But anyways, I remember learning this where somebody was saying, well, you don't know what that other person is encountering that day, right? So if they're cutting you off, maybe they're rushing their wife, their pregnant wife to the hospital, right? Maybe their child is hurt at school and they're rushing to go pick him up, right? So there's all these things. And so instead of getting into that victim role, when I'm driving, driving, and sometimes it still happens, right? You get pissed off because you're like, oh my gosh, how are you driving like this? Um, I tell myself a different story. And I go, you know what? They're probably just having a bad day or they're rushing somewhere and it's okay. So that helps you instead of being a victim. You, you think like you give them the benefit of the doubt and you say, you know what? The worst thing could be happening to them. Therefore, I can't be the victim. They're actually the victim and I feel sorry for them hence changing your mindset yeah like a little empathy give them grace type of thing it's pretty interesting so I didn't ever realize your process was to do that because you are now giving them they're the victim giving them the empathy and giving you your you the strength to say I I'm taking responsibility for my feelings I'm empowering myself to not get upset and we constantly say to our kids, no one can make you feel a certain way. I know that you can make me feel a certain way, (laughs) whether I like it or not. And I know I can do the same. But the truth is, if we're truly taking responsibility, you can never, I should never be able to give you the power to feel a certain, for me to feel a certain way. Right. Much easier said than done, for sure. And it's a common, it's a constant practice, right? To, especially with the people that are closest to you, it's hard. It's really hard. And we do teach our kids all the time. And um, another funny story is, you know, our oldest and youngest, best of friends, worst of enemies, just depends on the minute of the day. And, you know, as an older brother, uh, TJ tends to kind of pick on Trey, you know, quite a bit. And um, over the years, we've taught Trey like, hey, don't give him that power you know, to make you feel a certain way because Trey used to get really upset. And it's really funny now when TJ 
picks on him or does something to irritate him, I just hear Trey upstairs, and he'll sit there and start yelling at his brother, and he goes, TJ, I'm not giving you the power. You can't make me feel a certain way. And then he'll just walk away, and it's really funny. (laughs) Yeah, so one of the things I I definitely want people to understand is your emotions are your emotions, and no one could ever tell you that you're wrong. If something happens and you feel a certain way, look – it literally happens in our in our brain so fast like you you don't control that but what you can control is how you respond to that and the reason i bring this up is because again there are truly there are people that have had awful things happen to them right like think of the worst thing you can think of they have been you know molested or you know, I, I always go down that path because it's just some of the worst things that they are truly victims. But the point of this is, and I, this is where people get a little bit, you know, really angry when I, we talk about this, but their decision after that is to not be a victim or to continue to be a victim and watch the way those pass. Can you kind of explain that? I'm trying to, but you understand what I'm saying. Like somebody had something atrocious happen to them, Mm -hmm. but after that act, they can choose to either take responsibility for their life or they can be a victim. Do you, can you make that more clear? Yeah, totally. It's, you know, it's very, um, it's a choice that we have, right? Bad things happen to everybody. You know, we've all gone through, our childhood, whatever child, you know, trauma that we've gone through. But it, are you going to live in that space and constantly be a victim for the rest of your life? Or, and let that shape who you are and what you're going to do? Because um, you can live that, you know, you can blame it on that and be a victim and say, you know what, all these things, all these bad things happened in my life. And when I was little, my parents did this, you know, my uncle did this or whatever it is. And you can continue to live in that and not heal from it properly and really not do anything great with your life right and just kind of be angry and whatever those emotions of being a victim is or you can go yeah you know what those bad things didn't happen to me and you know even sometimes going the step further and saying I'm grateful for those bad things that happened to me because I know that moving forward that would never happen to my children and I'm going to make sure and be an advocate so that doesn't happen to other people right and you hear those stories all the time of people that have gone through these, you know, Oprah, for example, she had the worst upbringing and childhood and bad things happened to her, but look what she did with her life. She didn't say in victim role, well, I'm sorry, victim role. She flourished and she thrived and she has a platform to help so many people across the world. Right. So that was her choice to be responsible. It is interesting. I was actually just watched uh, one of Tony Robbins specials. And one of the things he's like is, look, I had just enough bad shit happen to me that I chose never to feel that way again. I wouldn't be the man I am today, he says, if these really heinous things didn't happen to me at such a young age. And that's why he's so passionate about helping other people get better. And so it it was interesting. I didn't know his story all that well, even though I love personal development. Some of his stuff had always kind of turned me off a bit. But as I watched it, I understood him a little bit better. So that was another example. Larry Ellison says, I had just enough going against me growing up for me to succeed. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting as we as parents try and protect our kids all the time, sometimes letting them again get that you know bumps and bruises obviously protect them enough but it's okay let them choose to be responsible choose to not be the victim and not always protect them and I know as parents that's really hard it is (laughs) it's super hard right because we we're trying to protect them we don't want them to fall and get hurt but you know what's funny I look back one more quick story um I look back and I'm totally that tiger mom, right? And uh, our youngest, Trey, was very rambunctious as a toddler, just always on the move. And I remember we were at our oldest's uh, baseball pictures, and there's this big grass hill that ends down at the bottom. There's a concrete path. And he kept on wanting to run down it because all these older kids were running down it. And he was probably only about one and a half, two maybe at the time. And I was holding on to his hand. I said, no, you're not going to run down that because I know what's going to happen is you're going to trip and fall and you're going to roll and then you're going to smash into the concrete (laughs) trail at the bottom. Well, he was struggling with me and struggling with me. And finally I said, you know what? Go ahead. 
Like, if you're going to learn your lesson, you're going to learn it now. And sure enough, he runs down that hill. He starts rolling and tumbling and goes headfirst into that concrete, scraping his face, his arms. I mean, I, you know, and I'm walking very slowly down that hill. And he's crying his eyes out. And all these other parents are around there going, oh, my gosh, what happened? You know, poor baby. And I get down there and I go, you know what? No, get up. Stop crying because that was your lesson. I told you not to do that and you chose to. And so let's go. (laughs) Well, so we didn't get a gold star on parenting that day. (laughs) However, uh, you know, his name is Trey Nato for a reason. Um, So anything else when it comes to victim responsible? I know it's that weird subject, but I'll tell you, it is literally life altering. It is defining and it's going to happen all people it happens to you, you choose to be a victim or take responsibility all the time. I really hope people take that exercise seriously, write it down on the left, the emotions that you feel when you're a victim, the emotions you feel when you take responsibility, and it will radically shift how you feel. Anything else you want to add to it? Yeah, it's, I really think, you know, we're going to go through life and there's, it's never going to be perfect, right? You're never going to be responsible every second time, you know, every second of the day. It's just not realistic. Um, But what I have realized that with a lot of practice is that I will get into that mode and I'm much quicker to getting out of it, right? Maybe because you're sitting there going, really, you're going to be a victim right now, which doesn't help, but it does help me snap back into responsible responsible mode a little bit quicker, I think. Well, I hope you guys enjoy it share it with your partner at full disclosure it's gonna come back and haunt you but i promise your life will be better if you do hey guys when you have questions you want us to talk about on the show hit us up at let's go win 365 on any of the social media platforms you can also go on our website check out the work-life balance assessment form download it for free it's all you thank you guys so much for today at least great job today i love having you on and (laughs) sharing some of these things that uh, not everybody in the world gets to hear about. So, All right. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Transcending life, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. If this content is delivering value to you, please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us. That helps us build this community, and that is what we are all about. Building this community as big as we can, helping as many people as we can, and deliver as much value as possible. Be sure to head over to TranscendentLifePodcast.com for information on my coaching courses and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Let's Go Win 365. Let's go win and transcend in life. This is the Transcend in Life Podcast with your host, J.M. Ryerson, taking you from fear to freedom. 